moving on, the speakers for our next panel will discuss how much should algorithms control the newsrooms. We often get carried away by the number of likes and shares or the trending nature of a story. Is that enough for newsrooms to narrow down on a new story? And how can they secure their originality in the media ecosystem? Are some of the questions that will be addressed by the expert panel. I now welcome on screen Mr. Abhijit Ayer Mitra, author, journalist, and defense economist, Mr. Ankit Tyagi, senior editor, India Today, Mr. Vivek Narayan, managing editor, South Network 18, Mr. Subhajit Sen Gupta, deputy group head, Network 18 Digital Videos, and Mr. Tarun Nangya, NewsX associate editor, special projects, ITV Group, as the moderator. Over to you, Mr. Nangya. Okay. So uh, welcome, uh, Mr. Subhajit Sen Gupta, Abhijit. Uh, good to see you again. And uh, uh, Vivek Narayanan, good to see you. Uh, so uh, today's topic is pretty interesting and close to my heart, whether likes uh, and, you know, in a sense, the story's popularity should be the sole denominator to choose the story and for news channels to go ahead and go to town with it. Uh, this is especially more relevant as I see it in the past three or four years when the popularity of content virtually has decided whether you know it, 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 it should be taken to town by channels. And when policy journalists like us point out uh, that, you know, why this or why that, uh, we are shown that the bottom line is more important than any other line, even in channels. And I think we must all agree to that at some point uh, when the economic environment is not as conducive, economics does rule over a lot of other decisions. And since we are all from the content side, we can uh, be frank about it. But uh, I have a very eminent panel and I would like to get each one of you uh, to uh, give your opening comment on today's topic. I'll start with Mr. Narayanan. Uh, what's your opening comment for today's discussion? Well, my opening comment would be, uh, Tarun, thank you, uh, to ask what's wrong in it. I mean, we are in the world and we are in the business of, uh, of news. And if social media is making news, if they are the ones for right or wrong, right or wrong is a different thing that we'll discuss later, perhaps. Uh, but if it's that it is in public space, it is being spoken about. If it is trending, why not speak about the things that are trending? You can find out whether it's right or wrong later. But uh, as a, an agent of news, as a person who's involved in news business, who makes its bread and butter out of uh, of news, I don't think there is anything bad in taking a topic which is part of a social media network which is being spoken about. I don't think it's intellectually inferior. I don't think that anything wrong in taking that and debating. But of course, there are several filters that as a news network, as a mainstream media, as a mass media that we have to be uh, aware of. Uh, so that's it. In a very short, I don't have a problem at all for either of any of my networks or my fellow individuals who are there with us, uh, uh, they're uh, taking the seed out of a story which germs out of, which germinates out of social media. Abhijit, uh, uh, your opening comment for today's discussion. Um, look, for me, it's very clear. Uh, how does a media house see itself? Is it an ideological crusader or is it a business? All right. Uh, and the second issue here is, does the media house see itself as somehow superior to the collective wisdom? Because what you see as news may not be what uh, the people want to see as news, right? So th there's a demand dynamic here and there's a supply dynamic here. And I think many of these things about, uh, 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 you know, what should be news and what shouldn't be news is very much an old debate where uh, the journalist was somehow perceived to be superior to the collective wisdom as sort of, you know, uh, 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 sort of giving people gyan in that sense. Whereas today, they have multiple options. And the second thing we need to realize is news like social media is about self-validation. All right, if people don't like the news that you're giving them, they will go hear the version of events or stories that they want 
to here. And this is where algorithms comes in because this is how you know YouTube news stars or YouTube opinion channels have become so much more powerful. I see so many YouTube channels that have more viewers than so-called mainstream TV channels. And the thing there is, all of them are regulated by algorithms. Uh, and, and the particularly dangerous part of this is it's sort of ab initio control of what news can be put out there or not put out there. You saw that Ethiopian woman, Timnit Gebru, getting sacked from Google because her entire job was to, you know, use linguistic paradigms to determine what was discriminatory language and what was not. So there's almost a very dangerous thing happening now that they realize that traditional news has lost its sort of monopoly of social control. And the social control is getting democratized to the point where they don't like it. And so they're changing, they're essentially rigging the paradigms of how news is reported, what constitutes news based on algorithms. So the element of control has moved now from governments to language and companies, which are, and you know, personally, I don't care how rotten a government is, I will any day trust the government uh, over a uh, company. Okay, that's an interesting perspective, Abhijit. I'll go to Subhajit. Uh, you sit in Delhi to get some bird uh, bird's eye view of all channels in the country. Uh, What's your opening comment on today's show? You know, as a digital newsroom manager, if I say algorithms do not dictate the way we work, I would be like outrightly lying. That's that's not the case. Like now the question whether it does it will dictate or not dictate is long past. It's the question is how much would you want the algorithm to dictate to you? Now, if we break it down, it again can be seen in two parts. The text that goes up the videos that goes up on digital. So both work in a different kind of an ecosystem. So especially if you look into the way text works, so algorithm has its pluses and minuses. While of course the stories which work more are done more because newsrooms at the end of the day would want a higher readership as well. There are also algorithm in introduced fact checks which have come in which to which are also taking care of a lot of the fake news, which otherwise would circulate easily. But if you come to the videos here, the revenue is directly linked to the number of views that you get in tech stories. It's not as much because there's a lot of on platform consumption, which is again, dependent on other revenue models, like the banner ads that you get, the native ads that you get. But if, if you look at videos, the consumption is mostly off platform, which means either on YouTube or on Facebook. And there the video is completely dominated by not just how many views it is getting, but also, with, especially in YouTube, it is getting in which geography. Like if a video gets one lakh view in India, it might earn lesser revenue than about 10,000 views in the US. Now as a news company, when you're looking at this algorithm, you cannot ignore the huge financial angle which is bringing with it. Because at the end of the day, as we are seeing, we are all struggling to find the right subscription model. That model is not there. You would see, uh, just for example, if you uh, notice, Punjab has much more number of uh, YouTube streamers than say most of the other languages. Why? Because CTR in the Punjab market, CPM, sorry, is the highest as in, because it's got a, a huge consumption in England, in Canada, in US, that's why the revenue that they make from, uh, of, from go doing a broadcast is much higher. So yes, there are strong revenue concerns which are there. But the question that we need to look at right now is whether or not the consumption that we are seeing is factually verified news or not factually verified news. This, this, this algorithm and the analytics that we get is two steps ahead from what we used to get from TRPs. TRPs would come once in a week, it will dissect some of your content and you will not know who these people are. Today, when I'm looking at the analytics, I would not only know who the person is, I would know which device the person is using, which geographical corner the person is coming from, and also several other parameters which comes with it. That makes it increasingly important for you to cater to the people. Because as Abhijit had also mentioned, I mean, can we still have that high pedestal? At one point of time, when newspaper was the medium, there was only one way of communication. 
journalism has changed with social media coming in with two way communication coming in we cannot uh, control the narrative one way or the other so that's okay. why we will have to pander to the entire ecosystem to an extent before like going uh, while keeping the checks and balances in place point well taken shubhajit especially a point on revenues australia as we all know recently uh, has an understanding with google to share revenues for all the content that they pour into in a sense google benefits from that advertising revenue india we haven't worked out any such thing but maybe soon enough i have got ankit tyagi who joined us on the panel just about 4 5 minutes ago ankit your opening comment on today's topic you see at the end of the day as a journalist uh, whether how much of uh, algorithm or ai or you know the other tools that we are using these days how much of that impacts the newsroom at the end of the day for me it all boils down to trust uh there would be certain things that uh, you know algorithm have made quite easy and uh, uh, also better as far as journalism newsrooms are concerned uh, be it data crunching quicker data crunching we've been using uh, you know few uh, few very smart algorithms when it comes to election number crunching i think in in all those aspects it does help uh, it, it's a great tool to have uh, you save a lot of time but at the end of the day Uh, would a viewer because there is with a, with a human story there is also credibility that that comes in attached does a viewer is the viewer still ready is it time for the viewer to in fact make that leap that it can trust a a, a program or an algorithm or a computer or an ai uh, to in fact swift through news or make news and present it to you that is something i still feel is uh, it, it, we, we are yet not there and uh, it has to be an amalgamation it has to be an amalgamation of technology of algorithm and the the human aspect as far as news is concerned because while ai can shubhajit was also speaking about fact checking while all those elements are great it's quicker uh, plus you can go through with a certain amount of uh, non bias as far as these uh, facts are concerned but for an in depth analytical deep pieces would you trust still trust uh, an algorithm which by the way has been created by a human being possibly you know has parameters set uh, which you are putting out there uh, that something uh, that is something i think needs uh, still needs uh, further uh, discussion development at the end of the day news is about credibility uh, it's about people that you see it's about people those who are putting it out there uh, it it is a great tool to have in the newsroom but can it can it in a way completely replace or be a dominant function in a newsroom i think uh, we'll have to wait uh, for some more time uh, when it comes to that okay point taken ankit i'll go to mr narayan at this point uh, to take this discussion ahead when we talk of algorithms and a certain kind of news that gains popularity do you believe that eventually drives down to dumbing down of news because we know the kind of news that gains popularity Uh, that appeals to the masses and what appeals to the masses may not necessarily what editors in the past so many decades have been actually giving uh, for example if you take examples of say newspapers like the hindu or even times of india you see that the quality of content i am not talking of the choice of stories i am talking of the quality of content that is maintained the story selection may be here or there but at least the quality is maintained here what has happened with instant response through algorithms maybe the quality is what suffers because in the end uh, if i may take the liberty of pointing out a lot of english editors as little as about 8 years ago used to point out at the quality of news of hindi channels and say that they are pandering to a certain kind of audience but now i think english is no better what we are doing is what we all know i don't need to explain you are all well experienced so mr narayanan your two uh, bit on this Well, it's always in human tendency to say that you know uh, my generation was always better than yours, and the generation which comes later will be always worse. I mean, Plato said the same of Aristotle. These people are uh, the new generation is gone, and we are talking about uh, BCs. Uh, but uh, again, this bit that you said about uh, about editors deciding if there is a sieve and if there is an algorithm, if there is a machine which decides what is big news. 20 years back it used to be an editor who used to sit in a cabin like this and he used to decide i mean what gave him just to take a leaf of what abhijit mentioned you know that 
create a false sense of intellectual uh, superiority of an editor sitting in a newsroom and deciding that this is what the readers of the Hindu or the Times of India should read uh, because this is news for them. And this is the editorial and this is what they should think about. And in, instead of that, the democratization of news as it has happened in social media, uh, well, you may call it, it is, it is thin, it is not intellectually superior, you can blame it on whatever, but it has taken things down to the lowest common denominator. I mean, if uh, when Ankit and when Shubho tells me about this uh, Punjab being a great uh, uh, a place where social media is consumed in such high numbers, I mean, it may be a YouTube source, it may be something else on Twitter, but uh, I believe uh, there will be this, this, this uh, industry, this uh, medium that we see is going through a period of churn and the speed at which it's going through the churn, the churn will be natural. Yes, there will be companies, there will be enterprises which will try and curate it for you. They will try and tell you uh, what is the big news. They will try and tell you what you should see, hear, read, understand, and perhaps even practice. You know, uh, that is where I think the trust, uh, the trust that uh, Ankit spoke about uh, comes in. You know, the trust of uh, me as a brand, my organization as a brand, and me as a journalist, as a curator of what happens on social media. Uh, if there are people who are seeing varied opinion, if they see my opinion also, and if they buy it, if they see that this man has over 20 years said this, this, and this, and they follow me, and if they see me on social media or read my articles, well, that's, as a, as a journalist, as a new avatar journalist, uh, well, I think uh, I'm on my road to nirvana. I've achieved what I could have. But, you know, this has always been there in my 25 years that I started as always been a television journalist. Those days, there was no government, uh, no private news. So we used to, we used to give our software to Durdashan. It used to be Aaj in, uh, in, in, in on Durdashan at that point and another news bulletin in, in the morning called First Edition a long time back. Uh, so this used to be private players who used to give uh, news channels. And then we evolved onto private uh, uh, news networks. So uh, all my experience is as, uh, as flaky as a television journalist. But, uh, but we used to be looked down upon by the print. They always used to say you are soundbite soldiers. You just go collect a soundbite and you're done. Yes, to job is done. You don't put brains behind it. But television has survived. It has evolved. It is still evolving. Uh, and when television journalists, when we, many of us see uh, social media as a threat, you know, this uh, so-called democratization of news, everyone more can say anything that they want. Uh, it's getting, and some of uh, some of the YouTube uh, Vivek, channels. Vivek, Vivek, your, answers, uh, your answer gave rise to about two, three questions in my mind. In that sense, it's a very important answer. And I have a very right person to take this discussion forward. Abhijit, is uh, News TV a tool for a manufacturing consent? Is that what News TV is? Second, I want to ask you, uh, if the editor shouldn't decide an algorithm, uh, as in a sense, should decide, the editor in the place is appointed because he has at least a little wisdom in what are the right issues to be taken up. Now, right may vary between A and B, but why do I say this? A lot of my audience would enjoy watching a, 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 a straight out of the action robbery scene happening in, say, Noida or Delhi over a lot of important policy decisions that are going to impact their lives in so many ways. But they are not interested, so we don't show them. Now, I'll juxtapose it with print. Hindu is a newspaper in South that makes 118 crores of revenue just out of its digital uh, subscriptions. A lot of IS aspirants read that newspaper. Of course, we in the North don't read it as much. But why? Because whatever be the slant, it may be, you know, whatever be the slant of news, the content that people get there gets them revenues. Why do I point this? Because in the end, there is a certain audience in the country which recognizes content, quality content. And I'm not standing or vocating anybody's bias. I'm just talking of quality content. Abhijit, I want your views on it. So uh, there's two points that you raised. One is the credibility. And uh, the second, you know, is uh, uh, manufacturing consent. Now, I remember a TV channel that used to, uh, that probably still runs a program called Left, Right and Center, where, you know, you had four or five panelists of whom four would be far on the left. One would be token right, who would invariably be inarticulate. 
and the three supposed center people were actually quite far to the left, who were just slightly less left than the alleged left candidate who were then portrayed as somehow being center. So, you know, th this is again, like the way we spoke about manipulated algorithms and Timnit Gebru with Google, this was one more way of manufacturing consent. But this then brings us to, you know, credibility. Now, Indians have this problem that, you know, we need somebody to certify credibility. Um, I think socially, we're incapable of making that decision ourselves, which is why every uh, a product, I remember once upon a time, it was the product that made the celebrity. Today, it's the celebrity who makes the product, which is why every product needs to have some kind of a celebrity endorsing it. Otherwise, you don't trust it and you won't buy it. And you know, this credibility uh, certification agencies that certain people run, they do create a lot of business for certain uh, print media or visual media that they certify. That said, I have always found TV journalism to be much more honest than print journalism because a TV journalist actually has to show what he or she is observing at that point of time. There has to be visual proof. On the other hand, print could usually get away with things saying, well, my source said this, you know, my source said that. We have actually had a person winning several uh, international uh, journalistic awards for a book she wrote on uh, uh, some riots in Gujarat a decade back, for which nobody has seen proof to date, where the initial employer has given up their uh, IPR on the uh, 632 odd uh, uh, audio cassettes that were allegedly recorded. But these audio cassettes have still not been released to the public. Okay, and yet this is considered legitimate journalism. Now you tell me what TV channel could run based saying, I heard this, I heard that. You know, you have to have visual backup for everything because TV can't run on I heard, uh, she said, he said, right? So I actually find TVs a lot more credible that way than print. Unfortunately, the problem with print is when people are archiving, you know, when narratives are being set, what happens is even today in an academic publication, you seldom see hyperlinks or footnotes that include uh, uh, videos and it always includes uh, newspaper print reports, right? So there's different ways of looking at this. So yes, my whole issue though is with this, you know, credibility and credibility certification agency because that is where this entire problem of algorithms and manufacturing content goes. Now, when you say credibility, whose credibility are you looking at? You know, between say Times Now and Republic O'Connor, about 70% of the market, are you telling me that 70% of English news viewers don't confer credibility, whereas less than 1% of viewers actually confer credibility on a channel? I'm not willing to accept that. I think the problem also lies in journalists who seek credibility from a certain peer group that they have been conditioned to see as their peers as somehow being more valuable than the credibility bestowed on them by the public as a whole. Okay, point well taken. Shobhajit, uh, uh, Abhijit made some two, three good points as far as credibility bestowed upon by the people as far as the peer group and of course this dictates a lot of news in Delhi we have to admit it but taking forward visuals can't cheat we have seen certain angles being shot where hardly any people attended the rally but with close-up shots we made it look as if a lot of people attended the rally and uh, this is done uh, this is these videos are sent out or shot you know how it happens how would you look at all these narratives that we discussed in the uh, with uh, Vivek Narayan and Abhijit you know, with algorithms coming into play, what is happening is an editor is getting a more viewed, uh, like more option to decide what they need to do. It's not algorithm is just dictating it. It's, it's an editor is taking a judgment on the basis of the algorithm and the numbers, number crunching that comes in front of him. And to say that that it's TV or print, I would say that the, that the game has moved on. If you see, if you travel through the street, whether it's... Uh, the auto rickshaw driver or the person sitting in the auto rickshaw both are watching content on youtube and there's a different kind of content which has been consumed 
and these numbers are much more authenticated than a trp and a bar for any other uh, measuring point that we look at so in a way if you say if you're looking at those data and there you can a get a better uh, understanding of what is being viewed b uh, when you're looking at these angles yes so there is also what is happening is we cannot like if there is a mobile footage which is reaching you which shows a person being beaten up by b person and a mobile clip reaching me where we see a b person is beating up a person in the both the clips both of the narratives would be built so we are in an era that's why it's called the post truth era probably that that both the narratives exist so only thing that can be done is put both the narratives on the platform because at this point of time there is we cannot make a distinction sitting in delhi right here what is happening say what happened uh, in nandigram what happened in uh, say in assam during the polling whatever is uh, like going on in each of these areas we have reporters we'll have to trust the reporters word because yes that's what they are trained to do but beyond that wherever news is happening wherever no uh, authentic hand is visible to see what exactly had happened all you can do is post both the narratives or as many narratives as it comes in and then viewers will watch what they watch and that's why probably there is also a boxification of the viewers happening if my kind of uh, content is far right then i'll look at far right content my content is far left i will see far left content and that's why we would all exist in bubbles which is happening but yes. that's how the post truth era is building up as well okay i'll take this thing right now ankit uh, you uh, represent a channel where one gets to see so many views and so many kinds of journalists in in that ways it is fun watching your channel uh, i want to know from you the choice of news in your own view should be dictated by algorithms or would you rather let the editor sense prevail in terms of what news you want to show today knowing that's imp- important for people what kind of choices i mean because in a channel like yours i think there would be some kind of mulling going on before each story is put on air see that's right i mean there is still uh, for every news channel i mean there is still that edit meeting where all of us do get together we decide what uh, stories big stories of the day uh, that we are discussing it will also be about what all the, what are the stories that have been gathered by our news gathering team and then how and what way each anchor would differentiate or which angle would they want to take when they put that story out but there is a certain sense of responsibility and also an oversight when you sit with a group of people and various angles are decided uh, the, the in the edit meeting it's just not that i can run away with the whatever narrative i want to put across i mean there are checks and balances there would be discussions a different point of view would also come in you know i was just so 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 in that sense the whole democratization of our newsroom which allows us to have uh, multiple anchors trying to speak about multiple point of views on yes. a single story that in a way is a human intervention which i don't think an algorithm can offer there will be a certain sets parameters that you will put out as far as an algorithm goes it will be created by somebody and that algorithm is only going to work on those certain parameters uh okay. you know we were just uh, like abhijit and shubhajit both were mentioning a few things uh, you were talking about the hindu newspaper and and the kind of uh, revenue that they are generating when it comes to their online stream at the end of the day this is what i started uh, by, you know by credibility look at hindu or any other big online revenue stream most of them are attached to a brand name which has a certain years of journalism behind them and certain credibility attached to them even in the exploding online digital market you will still find a news clip of a news anchor who is associated with a television channel going rather going more viral than somebody an unknown person putting out his point of view uh, you know on the web there will be a certain kind of people that will want to pick it up but still it's about people those who represent a certain kind of uh, a credibility or are attached to a news organization that is why even in the digital uh, uh, you know uh, era in the digital uh, be twitter youtube that is why the channels and newspapers have such a big imprint because 
become with a sense of credibility for the viewer you are able to consume that news thinking that because it comes attached with india today or aaj tak or hindu or times of india or times now or republic there has been certain vetting process that it has gone through and that I, is why it's easier to consume i and i, I agree i i i agree ankit with your point when you say that uh, when it comes from say uh, an india today or some other organization which has been known at least some kind of process uh, vetting would have been done before the story is put out that lends it credibility i go across to vivek uh, mr narana how do you look at it a algorithm selected stories second wisdom of editors who've been in this business a professional journalist qualified who understands how stories are put out and they are wisdom of 10 20 15 whatever years uh, how would you balance that out because in today's time revenue is important as well as the message is important uh, uh, you spoke about revenue that's where i'll start from because in my present role i look at uh, regional networks in south india and i have found uh, i mean uh, leave the journalism part alone if you look at ratings uh, if it's ratings driven if it is advertising driven uh, quite clearly there are shows in some of my regional networks which are based purely out of what's trending now there's a half hour series in in kannada channel which i run called uh, what is trending on the internet and it has so much of rating it does not require too much of journalism per se perhaps but some smart thinking you look at what's trending on social media what's trending on youtube what's trending on i mean per- perhaps for national channels may not be able to carry it or hindi channels at one point used to carry it and because youtube started filing cases against them to stop but regional media is not being looked with a microscope by these agencies so we still manage to a great extent to run video clips uh, of what is popular it could be something from china or for cat from japan it could be uh, ridiculous videos but it does give the channel revenue it does give my kannada vertical a revenue so how do i put my journalism into it why why does it require my intervention at all uh, cctv based footage which is so popular uh, which is nothing but voyeuristic pleasure voyeuristic if you look at whether it be an accident whether it be a burglary whether it be a person caught pants down well all these are on tv or on cctv it's just strung together into a half hour and uh, Uh, and being not just across my channel but there are several smaller networks in interior uh, uh, interior india where they make a living a half hour one hour is loop and it is successful in one way so the algorithm tells you that yes this is being watched and that is being aired from the internet onto television and that again an agency tells that it's hitting and viewers are watching and i get the revenue i mean i don't no whether it's let's not go, go into the right or wrong of it but it is successful at the end of the day but uh, just to take from where uh, ankit uh, left uh, and where uh, you were speaking about does it require human intervention yes the selective uh, the collective wisdom of a group of editors uh, if it is so if it's not one person who decides everything if uh, the wisdom of other senior journalists is also taken into uh, account uh, I, i hope hopefully many other organizations it is like that uh it does make a difference to have a, an amalgamation i would say a uh, 80 20 of purely editorial driven which is not driven by what the social media says or uh, uh, well what was how is it that we were collecting news till now as editors we were collecting it from our reporters stringers uh, from vernacular medium among the news collection agencies why is it that social media or uh, curated stuff that bombs our inboxes are also not becoming a part of it is our job as editors to go through it act as a seed and take out as i said earlier take the seed point, out point well taken abhij uh, vivek i'll go to abhijit abhijit uh, three quick questions in quick succession i was just reading a book called future crimes it talks about deep fakes then i saw a channel said we don't need anchors uh, we can put out news without anchors we'll use a deep fake visual and uh, there'll be editors who will be writing news on decks and it will be read out by a face uh, which is picture perfect which is appealing and which will change every half an hour because we have a deep fake too now for a lot of people it may be good news because you don't have to pay fat salaries to anchors you can dispense with them but as far as we are concerned this is a question of should we uh, should something like this be done second you make a very good point uh, on your last uh, uh, intervention where you said that a certain ch- uh, channel put out a certain show 
where you know you could deliberately manufacture consent by getting dumber type of if i may allow to use that word uh, a, a panelist for a, representing a certain ideology and for other ideology you can get the best minds uh, i want to now ask you what happened during the farmer agitation uh, the bloggers took the lead and the channels followed it became very evident after a few weeks that the algorithm started actually you open youtube and you could see the bloggers news first and the channels news you have to scroll a bit even after all the money that these channels spent on getting you know they are uh, news up the bloggers news were coming up and people wanted to see it the channels followed what does that tell you about algorithms and the future of news because an independent guy with a mic and a camera emerged much mightier than channels with hundreds of intelligent paid staff on their roles how do you look at it so see this is goes back to the point i was making i'm going to deal with your last question first uh which is the complete loss of credibility of traditional news media right be it print or be it tv in that sense so i don't actually think that having a big name behind you at one point it used to be a quality filter it is no longer a quality filter right people again it is this sort of self certifying agencies that claim that a certain editorial board is a quality filter it is not let me give you three simple examples do you remember enram's story on the rafal based on that document which was very cleverly edited manipulated to remove certain comments that made that contextualize the entire conversation happening out there and nobody no fact checking agency nobody picked up on it till i tweeted about it because when the entire thing came out you compare the original with the latter all the conversation started making sense and the hindu had deliberately manipulated comments out of the uh, images on which it ran uh, three uh, days worth of so called exclusives and on the fourth day after this had been exposed it fell flat completely right second on doklam you had uh, again a reporter from the hindu claiming that the chinese opened the flood gates and the water completely washed them away again it was a failure of editorial a severe failure of editorial responsibility if because they had bothered looking at satellite imagery which incidentally was free and had already been put up from 13 14 hours after the uh, deadly clashes out there you would have seen that there was absolutely no proof of water flow the water was still being held out there in fact the water wasn't uh, released till about 48 hours after the entire doklam incident happened right so you also have an editorial board it seems that is completely clueless about technology so where is the credibility here then you had the business standard which went on running stories about you know uh, how this is an actual occupation of indian territory but the editors never took it upon themselves to actually do even basic fact checking which is ask the correspondent who was reporting please tell us what your interpretation of the border is in a b and c and then we'll take it and so what was happening was they were running these stories without any kind of verification or proof and every time we would put out satellite imagery the correspondent in question would then change the border 1 km or half a km further and further uh, east so that the burden was greater on you to prove that this wasn't an occupation anymore right okay so i'm sorry but none of these channels have credibility okay so this credibility is a complete chimera it's sort of a you know it's a, it's 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 a sort of cheap self promotion gimmick that people use and it tells you a lot that people even see this as credibility of where their mindset is on the other hand let me give you an example in india today um unfortunately it's become a meme in pakistan now uh, uh, to my great regret i was on a tv show with rahul kanwal where he had put up these uh, this engine which the indian air force was going on saying is a gf17 uh, sorry it was an f16 engine it clearly was not it was a mig21 engine i corrected him on screen and he immediately admitted that it was a mistake and corrected it for me that is credibility that yes, somebody yes. has the intellectual caliber to say yes okay fair enough this was a mistake we correct ourselves and we're no longer going going to run this news that's, so you, that's a that's 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 a point well taken but i am getting alerts that we are overshooting our time sorry, we just, are at 12 okay okay so just one quick last point i think we need to be very clear there is a difference between journalists and anchors 
The problem is we tend to confuse anchors with journalists. If you go back to the old Doordarshan days when we grew up, none of the TV anchors were actually out on the field reporting or winning journalism awards. We need to separate the two. An anchor okay. is merely a comparing function like an MC at an event. They are not the event. Okay, okay. That's a, that's a good point and a good note to end this show. Uh, those who have not read must read Abhijit Ayer Mitra's story using satellite Im imagery on the Northeast, which I think you put out about eight, nine months ago. Uh, 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 that was an interesting story. Uh, I would like to thank Shubhajit Sen Gupta, Abhijit Ayer Mitra, Ankit Tyagi, and Vivek Narayan for sparing time joining us on today's panel. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Tara. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.